Hello there everybody, I am Tadashimori and in this video here I will teach you about creating origami and to do this I will show you the steps I took to create this origami Charizard here. And if you want to support my channel and the origami community, go to my Patreon page, the link is right here and also in the video description. So let's start! So, first of all, before I show you any technique, creating origami is about not giving up. I'm saying this because I hear a lot of time people saying to me that you need to be a genius to create an origami, and that's really not the case. For example, it took over one week for me to create my first origami, and the result was this. Yes, it took me over one week to create this simple origami. That's why I say origami is about perseverance, it's about not giving up. Of course, after some time creating origami, you get the hang of it and start creating more complex things. So, it is about practice, yes. But even for me right now, I took over 60 hours to create this origami Charizard here. And during this process, I had to remake the origami over 15 times. So, although it's really, really frustrating, I know that it's just a matter of time and eventually I will find a good solution. Okay, now let's see the steps I took to create the Charizard. Although I failed, or rather I didn't like the result of this first attempt, for the educative purposes it works really well, so let's work on it. So first, let's see the picture of the Charizard. And by looking at the picture I figure out that the face would be the most difficult part to make the details. So let's start making the face. And another thing that you have to decide before starting the origami is if you want to make the origami in this direction here, or in this direction here. For this origami here, it seems more intuitive to make using the diagonal, because you can use this part here to make the tail, and this part to make the head. So the diagonal works really well for this origami. Now I also decided that I would make a simple face, nothing too complex. And for that I would need to work on three points. First, the eyes, nothing too complex, just something really simple. Second, the mouth, and third, the horns. Before we proceed, there's one basic thing that you should know. When I want to make a narrow point with origami, the crease pattern has lots of lines coming from that point. So, let me show you this example. Here you have a narrow point, and if you open it, as you can see you have several lines coming exactly from this point. By analyzing this origami here, you can see that the ears have two points, and the crease pattern is exactly this and this point here. So as you can see, several lines coming from these points. And, for example, in a more complex origami, like my Darkness Dragon, you can see here, the tip of the horns are here and here. Now, the mouth, you have the top part of the mouth here, and the jaw is here. So, as you can see, several lines coming from this point. Now, the eyes I made here with the tip of the paper, okay, this point here. And as you can see, the claws are this, this, and these points. And after some time working on crease patterns, you will be able to see these points really fast. Okay, so let's continue. Next step, why did I use a tip to make the eyes? So, let's show here. One way, of course you don't need to use this method, you can use whatever method you want, but I think this one here is pretty easy, because you use one tip and you can make both eyes like this. So you fold twice and fold here a small tip behind and here you have two eyes. Well, it's not really that great, but yeah, it looks okay, right? So, as I wanted to make a simple origami, this one here should be fine. So, unfolding it, you can see that I use it one tip here. So, my next question is, how many tips do I need to make the head? So, I need one to make the eyes, two 
to make here the top and the bottom part of the mouth and two to make the horns. Okay, now the next step would be to place these points on the paper. So we decided before that we would work here along this diagonal here, right? So let's start by finding which points we need to place along the diagonal. First we have to place the eyes, it would be the corner of the paper, right? Also the top and the bottom part of the mouth. Now the horns will be on the sides and not in the middle line, so we are going to work on that later. So now we are going to place these three points at the same distance from each other along the diagonal here on the corner of the paper. So it's going to look like this. Now the lines crossing these three points should look like this. Of course later we are going to make more lines, but for now let's work only with this. Now let's try to fold these lines. I'm not going to work here on all the details of how to fold it, but if you try you will see that it's not really that hard. So as you can see here, there is one line missing. So we need one more fold here, otherwise we are not going to be able to fold the other lines. So you got at this point here, you just press the sides of the paper. Now open here the big flap and that's it. Now you can see here the layers, right, that will make here the, the eyes, the top part and the bottom part of the mouth. But of course we still need to narrow here these points. But before we do that, let's work here on the horns. So here is the crease pattern and here is the folded model. So as I said before, we are going to work here on the horns and as you can see here, the Charizard horns are quite small. So it doesn't need to be really far from the other parts. So where could I put the other two points? Well, it could be here. But I guess it's too far because it's twice the distance of the bottom and the top part of the mouth. So if I place the horns here, it's going to become too big. Well, as you can see here on the Darkness Dragon, that's exactly what I did. So here are the eyes, the top part of the mouth, the bottom part, right? And the horns are here. So it's the same point. And placing the horns here would make it as big as the Darkness Dragon horns. And as you can see, it's too big. So the other option would be to place here. And it seems to be about the right distance. So let's make a line from this point. Going downward like this. Now we have all the lines we needed. And this point would be exactly this place here. So as you can see, there's just one fold missing. So let's make it like this. And sometimes you work on the theory and you end up missing details here and there. So in this point, as you can see, I made this fold here and it seems that there's one fold missing here. One fold to this direction here. Okay, so I have this fold here and this fold here and I must make this fold up to the end, otherwise I cannot make the other folds. Of course after some practice you will be able to work only on the crease pattern and you don't really need to fold each part to know what's going on. And just do the same thing here on the other side and the model will look like this. As you can see here, we still need to narrow these points. I'm not going to show you exactly how to narrow, it's quite easy. 
So you just have to fold here the sides up to the middle line and like this you will be able to narrow these sides. Well, the middle part is going to be a little bit harder but it's basically the same thing. So you should try, you should take a paper and try to do this and you see that it's not really that hard. And after making here the eyes, okay, so just fold here downward twice and fold a small tip upward to make the eyes. And basically, that's it. The next step was to narrow here the bottom part of the mouth. And to do it, I would need to make this fold here and just inside reverse this fold. Okay? So at the same time, you're going to reverse this fold here. And at this point here, you can see that you change the structure of the origami. So we still need to narrow here the other parts of the mouth. So as in this example, sometimes you have to change the structure of the origami because again, you work on the theory and when you fold the paper you see that you forgot one detail here and there. But either way the origami was getting really good at this point. Because as you can see I could make here the structure of the head and the model is still not too complex. Now let's see on the crease pattern. We made these two folds and small folds narrowing here the tips of the mouth and the horns. So in the crease pattern it should look something like this. So narrowing the paper means that I made more lines coming out from these points. Now let's work here on the neck. So this part here is exactly this part here. Now we have to narrow the neck and I tried several ways and the best way in the end was like this. I just have to fold here this part in half, unfold and make an open sink or an inside reverse fold in this case. And the model will look like this. Now we just have to fold here the sides of the horns and the mouth to keep narrowing it and the result should look like this. Of course as I was rushing the folds the result's not looking really good but you can see the structure here. You can see here the mouth, the horns and the detail on the neck. But if folded carefully the result should look like this. And I don't know if you remember, but at this point I posted this result on Facebook. And that was just the beginning. Okay, so now let's work on the crease pattern. So, now we know how the corner of the paper should look like. The next step is to decide the proportion of the paper it will take. At this part I made several mistakes and several tries of different proportions, and it was really hard to decide it. But for this video, let's try one fifth of the side. Now, I decided how to make the hands. If you think about it, the arms should continue from the neck. So, let me show you here. As you can see, you have here the neck and the arms should continue from this point here. So, you should have to pull here and you have the neck and start the arms. So, knowing that, the best place to make the arms would be continue from the neck. There are two folds missing here, so we have something like this and somewhere around here you would place the arms. And as I have these parallel lines, one way to make the arms would be like this. 
So let me just fold here parallel lines. So we would have something like this, right? So parallel lines. Now, one way to do it, I think the most intuitive way would be like this. So first fold here, the sides of the paper downward like this. Now we are going to make an inside reverse fold. And after you do it on both sides, just fold everything in half like this. And we are going to narrow here this big flap. Of course, you should do it with inside reverse folds and not like this, but well, it's just to demonstrate how it's going to look like. And you should also make open sink folds on these parts to narrow all the fingers but well I'm not going to do it right now and as you can see you can just pull the fingers and you have here a nice claw okay so let's see how the crease pattern looks like so you have here the parallel lines and you have just small squares in these parts Making here one, two, three claws. So now I need to decide where I will place these hands. This was another part that I had to try different settings to see the result. And the two most obvious ways to do it was to either divide it in five parts and place the hands here. So I tried this way and there was a little problem. And it was that the hands was too close to the head so the neck would get too short. So I tried another way and the other option was to make a line here right and also here and the remaining part divide in half so the hands would be exactly in the middle of the paper and in the end the result was better with this way so let's continue from this point. So just make here the small squares and this line here should continue to the end. Now do the same thing here on the other side because it is symmetrical. The lines here are really bad but you got the idea. Okay so let's move on. All right you have these lines here and well at this point here as you can see you had to make these two squares and the line continue here in these directions of course so otherwise you wouldn't have a tip to make the claw so let's just do it here and at this point I had to make another decision I could just make here another fold and that would make the neck and the hands get the same size here and here would have the same size and the result was really not that bad and the origami was okay, but the problem was that the arms here was too long and I couldn't improvise and make it shorter. So the other option was to make only this fold here. So the arms would be here and the neck would be here. And as you can see the neck's way bigger than the arms. And this way here was way better. So I just continued from this point here. And as you can see the middle point here, the middle part, ended up becoming another point. So this part here I use it to make the belly. Now let's do the same thing here on the other side. Now this part here is a consequence of the other side because if I made this length here on this side, this other side should be exactly the same length. And of course there's a reason for that and I will show you in a moment. So let's just make it first. Now 
See here, the folded model should look like this, right? And then here, there would be a fold to start the neck. Now what happens here on the other side is that this point here is a good place to start the wing. So, the neck should be something like this, right? And the wing will start here, really close from the arms and the neck. So, as you can see here, the neck, the arms and the wing. And if you open it a little bit, you can see here and here with the same length. Of course, if I wanted to, I could make the wing here or any other place, but this place here looks better, right? That's why here and here has the same length. Now, I just had to make here another fold in this direction. Now, the wing and the neck would have the same size, and I guess it's about the right size. Now, at this point, I just completed the crease pattern not thinking too much, just trying to make all the folds so that the whole model would collapse. So I just put here some basic folds. And in the end, the origami look at like this. Well, there are some missing details, but the base was like this. And I tried to fold the model, and the result was this origami here. So big success, right? Well, not really, I didn't like here the legs. As you can see, it's it's improvised, I, I just folded here, okay, so it was like this, I just folded a V-shaped fold to make the legs effect, but here there are too many layers, and as you can see, it's completely improvised. I think there are small differences in the crease pattern I showed and this one here, but the base is really close to this one. And the problems were the same. Okay, so another problem that you can see here is on the base of the neck. Here, you can see that it's not really too long, right? The neck's not too long, because I improvised it here, so I made a crimp fold just to hide a little bit of the neck. And here on the crease pattern, you can see that this part here is the arm, and here is the neck, and it seems that this proportion here was not good. And the problem is that even if I improvise and make the neck shorter, it's going to be too thick. Okay, so next problem here are the arms. It seems okay here, right? But it has too many layers, so it's too thick and that makes it harder to shape the arms in the correct position. And one more thing, the claws here are too big, so if I pull here, you'll see how big it is. So as you can see here, it's way too big. So I have to shape it like this, so only the tip is going to show, and make it look like it has the right size. And even though I said it's one of my first attempts, it took a lot of time. And as you could see, there was lots of variations I tried until I got to this point. Is it a bad origami? No, it's just that doesn't remind me of a Charizard. And I know I could improve it, so I tried few variations, different bases, etc. This one I was trying to make proper legs, placing in a better location and not just improvising. Like this. But, well, the problem here was that the tail was too short. So, the distance here from the wing to the leg was good, and also the distance from the wing to the arms was good, but the tail was not really good, and also the distance here from the legs um, was making the legs a little bit too short, so I decided to change it, and I made this model here. This one here, I changed the arms completely. So as you can see, it doesn't have all those parallel lines anymore, and the claws are here on the side of the paper. But, well, the organ was starting to get a little bit confusing, and I, I couldn't really complete this model here. And the origami started to get too complex. I mean, 
The body of the Charizard was getting too complex, but the face was still the same. So it's not a problem to make a complex origami, but in this case it was like putting a diamond on a plastic ring, so the body and the face was not matching. And I don't know if you noticed it, but the whole structure was based on the face. So changing the face means that I would have to change the whole origami and think everything from the start. So I was resisting this a little bit in the beginning, but then I decided to change the origami completely. And that was when I made this Facebook post. Well, but we will study the final version of this origami in my next video teaching how to create origami. So thanks a lot for watching this video. If you wanna know how to help me make more cool videos and improve the origami artist community, go to my Patreon page, the link is right here, and of course don't forget to subscribe. So thanks for watching this video, see you, bye bye.